for a start, I'll, I'll just share a little bit about experience. I, I won't talk about my political experience because those are the things you know. And then just now, uh, the MC was so nice to talk the whole history, you know, uh, of what I do and all that. This is my fourth ministry. So I just talk about before that. Before that, I spent like 14, 15 years in business. And uh, most of the time, majority of the time is not in Singapore. So half the time, I do not know what is happening in Singapore. I think the time when I came back was the time they are trying to decide whether you have casino or not. So before that, I uh, travel around and live around <laughs> in the region. Uh, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Thailand, India, mainly this few. Lah. Then I travel around a lot to do projects. But the projects that I'm involved in are, when I was more junior staff, the projects I'm involved in is setting up warehouses uh, and computer systems. Uh, but I'm not trained in that field. I'm actually an accountant by training. I graduated from NTU uh, accountancy with very bad results. Uh. <laughs> it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true. The, the, the subjects we have in accountancy is like eight subjects, right? And then there's like five and six subjects are subjects that technically you have to be proficient or you have to memorize well and then, uh, of course, apply. But there are three subjects where you have to read why and then give your point of view, opinion, give alternative ideas. Those three, I do pretty well. Uh. The other five or six, not that great. Uh. But they still give me a pass. Uh. I pass without any grades at all. No class, nothing. Uh. So they call me a no-class graduate. Uh. Yeah, it's true, it's true. <laughs> Surprisingly, I'm <laughs> right here amongst uh, my colleagues in cabinet. Everybody is a scholar. Okay, so, so when I enter business world, right, uh, I uh, started with an uh, accounting firm because it's the easiest to find a job uh, because you can get a job before you graduate. So I, I found a job. Uh, in fact, very nice of the big accounting firms to offer me. Uh, several of them offer me, uh, give me an offer. Um, not because my results are great. I think because my CCS, uh, my CCA is not bad uh, because I do a lot of sports and all that all the way through university. Uh, and also I did business when I was in university. So they were quite interested. They said, how come you're so free? Uh, st you to study and can do business. Well, I think it's just interest. Uh, I have a lot of passion for business. So uh, I entered one of them. And then I quit very soon uh, because cannot tahan. Uh. Because you know, uh, auditor inside the accounting firm, you have to check the books, right? Every day check other people's account. I say that, why I must check other people's account? Why can't I do my own account? You know what I mean? Why other people cannot check my account? You know, so I decided to chow. But then it's very hard to find another job because in Chinese we say you know? because it's like you, are, you got a degree, then you go where? Nowhere, right? So I try to apply for a sales job, uh, try to sell things. I didn't get a sales job, but I got a customer service job uh, at, a, at a company that's a very good company. In fact, that was the turning point. This company is called Nike. Uh, yeah. yeah, Nike shoes, you know, Nike shoes. Suits me well. But on the other hand, is I, I didn't. I was surprised. I surprised. <laughs> I'm very surprised that they had a very good training program. Uh, and also, when I joined them, was the right time to join. Why? Because they were a very small company in Singapore, about 20 people, and they were just starting up as a principal, uh, uh, sort of a subsidiary of the global headquarters. Uh. So I joined them as customer service and operations. And uh, what I do is that your shoe spoil, right? You come over, right? I change the shoe. For you. Then they teach me how to look at the shoe, whether the soles are. You know, whether it's factory fault or anything. So, so, that's how it, so that's how I got my career started. Then subsequently, I think they thought this guy, you know, looked like he's them enthusiastic, like I want to learn a lot of things. So from the retail shop, they put me into the office and then asked me to do some computer system. And then after that, uh, put me in the warehouse to ask me to go and do stock take and learn about fork, learn how to drive fork leaf and then also do data entry and everything. Then after that, I was in sales and marketing. Then after that, they sent me to the US. And that's where I saw Michael Jordan. Yeah, shook. Uh. Uh, see, I know, I see. Uh, I know you never see before. I saw Michael Jordan. Uh, so tall, you know, the Michael Jordan. Uh, then they sent me to the lab, which is R&D lab, to see how Michael Jordan shoes are produced uh, and all that. I had a full range of training. But I was young. I was very keen to learn, so I... I keep learning, and uh, finally I found a little niche for myself in a company which is in operations, uh, which is supply chain management. And uh, I subsequently um, head up the operation department at a very young age, I was about 25 years old. I had about 30 over staff. I, I grew the department, installed the computer system. And then I left, 
I left the company because uh, uh, my boss say, I think the retail business industry is only this big. La. Why don't you try something more technical that Singapore is developing? They say the logistics sector is big. So I, I joined another startup company to, in logistics. La. It's not a startup as in globally, but it's a, really like a startup for that department in Singapore. So subsequently, but this company sent me overseas. So I, I continue, continue uh, they have a long story, but I, every two and a half years, I do different things. While I was working, I invested and start up other companies uh, with my friends, or sometimes I, you know, I see my friends very poor thing, they want to start company, then uh, they say, no, you know, nobody want to invest in them. Then they ask me, do you have any idea? They say, okay, you have some idea. Then we start together. I'm a non-executive kind of partner and shareholder. But I start something with them. So cumulatively, I start about 15 or 16 different startups and companies. Two of them are listed. So, uh, I mean, along the way, I guess I go through the pains with them. I was, as I was working in corporate, but at the same time, I realized the importance of cash flow and some of the different challenges ahead, manpower, and also how to scale. The biggest challenge I felt was not lack of passion, but uh, I would say that um, the biggest uh, challenge is learning how to learn fast and also to scale up fast or scale up at the right time. Many want to scale up very fast, but uh, how do you scale up at the right time? The startups that are usually involved in are technology, so we have to really speed ourselves up very quickly. Um, the issue is, cash flow is always an issue, because when you want to boot R&D, you also need a bread and butter and a food on the table. So how do you keep that balance? While well, you develop your own software, you have to do other people's things. So how do you keep that balance? And then the other thing is that finding people was really difficult at that time as well. Uh, not just now, you know, with all our main policies, but at that time as well. And then when you're scaling up, you realize as founders, right, we are not good at what we do already because you don't know how to run bigger and bigger companies unless you learn really fast. So how do you bring in professionalism to come in? And then do you have the money to bring them in? So those are the issues we grapple with uh, you know, for several of the companies. And not only that, then competition comes in. Hey, how do you fight the competition? Every day, I realize every day we're on a treadmill. Oh, well, I would say every day on a treadmill. Uh. If you are on a treadmill, you can imagine that we just keep running. But it's faster and faster. It's non-stop. Because in that sector, in those sectors that I'm involved in, the competition keeps coming in. Better to entry is not low, but there will be people who want to eat your lunch. Uh. So I, uh, we are typically, you know, the challenge is always there that you will never survive to see another day. And uh, those are some of the experiences I, I went through. And uh, it, it was, uh, to, to be honest with you, I find it uh, very, uh, I find that very exciting. Uh, because I thrive on those challenges. Uh. And my partners too, uh, some of my friends, who today are still, I can't invest in business anymore, but who today are still doing really well, they all get excited by competition. They all get excited by learning new things. They also get excited by actually pushing boundaries. Pushing boundaries meaning that when, when we start anything, right, we always start in Singapore, right? When we start anything in Singapore, the strategy, any strategy you think about, not on paper, is say, what, how do you want to market? It's about overseas. So it's never about Singapore. Majority of the time, the discussion was about which is the overseas market. Because to us, we have to be taken that we'll be okay in Singapore, but Singapore cannot be the only one. We want to survive out there more than we want to survive in Singapore. I don't know how come we had the mindset, maybe because most of us did regional sales. Uh. So when we did regional sales, we are always overseas rather than Singapore. So we are so sold about overseas market, especially China. I live in China, so especially China, we like, yeah, that place is better, this place is better, let's chong there, chong here, you know. 
So there was a lot of that discussion was about how do we penetrate the market. Very, there was just very basic discussion about Singapore. So that's how uh, the businesses will scale up. Lah. I wouldn't say all succeed. In fact, majority failed. Uh, some I never see my money again. But uh, those I saw the money again, uh, I saw multiple times over. But that's the fruit of the labor. But you see the glam part then, the behind the scenes is really uh, a bit more difficult to say. It's just pure hard work. But it's never the money that drove us. It was to see the product grow and people actually buying it, lah. <laughs> the demand. Not all are B2C. A lot of those are investors are B2B. B2B. Because we are better with doing, helping businesses do business. That means serving their needs. Not BPO, not things like that. But there are some B2Cs one, they are still surviving. Uh, we have also shop fronts, but the majority of the shop fronts are overseas. So a lot of internationalization more than localization uh, at that point in time. Uh, so say those are some of the experience that we have. But I think most importantly is that if you are willing to venture and you already started something, and I would just say that uh, well, while you want to take a measured growth, you want to take a conservative pace, you must know that um, you are not the only one in the market. You're not competing with the government or anything. You're competing with the real competition out there. So they are beside you and watching you every day. Somebody's got to know what you're doing uh, and others will be cutting their own deals. Uh. And uh, those who cut their own deals, uh, actually uh, a lot of things are done behind the scenes. And one of the things that I realized that really helped me was um, I like to get to know people. <laughs> I like to get to know as many people as possible. And uh, if I could, I, I, I like to be friends with everybody, even my enemy or you say my competition. I like to cooperate with them if I can and then just say we share the pie, la, see how we can share the pie. Really cannot share the pie, we fight it out. La, but I like to do that. La. Yeah. So I make a lot of friends and those friends I make uh, since younger days, right? I think younger days when I started doing some business in university, uh, I give out a lot of cuts. Uh. Those younger days till now has benefited me a lot. Everybody is a friend. And I'm, one thing that really helped me is I'm very thick-skinned. Uh. So this thick skin actually helped me. Uh. Yeah. That's why politics suits me now because every day I get whacked, you know. Internet, everything. Uh. But my skin very thick. Uh. So it, it bounced back. Uh. The bullet bounced in and bounced back. So uh, it's quite okay. One, uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not embarrassed. Uh. So, so this thick skin thing help. Uh. Then I go around like salesman like that. Yeah. So this is how it is. Uh. A lot of story told. Uh. I hope that later on you can have more interaction and then we share a bit more. Uh. If not, then I can go into a little bit more detail how we handle some of the situation. And we can talk about scenarios and all that. And then we can do sharing. And then if I have a chance, I can share that. Maybe current government programs or schemes that can help you, you may not know. You can apply. In fact, now, yeah, so, so many programs and schemes that can be applied. Uh, it's just that some of us, we may not know. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.